In this video, you're going to learn the basics behind sequences and series. So let's dive into this lesson. So the first thing we want to talk about is what exactly is a sequence and what exactly is a series? Well, a sequence is basically a list. And you can see the, the terms are separated by a comma. And that's exactly what a sequence is. Whereas a series, okay, is actually a sum where you're adding the terms together. So let's look at this first sequence here we have. We've got 5, we've got 9, 13, 17, 21, dot, dot, dot. This goes on forever and ever. But what we want to talk about first is a little bit about the terminology. So this term here we call n equals 1, okay, for the first term. And then this one here is n equals 2, n equals 3, etc. But the value of the term, we refer to that as a sub 1. See how that's like a little bit lower? It's a subscript, like submarine, a little bit below the line. And then this here, number uh, 9, is a sub 2. It's the value of the second term. 13 is a sub 3. It's the value of the, the third term, etc. So that's a little bit about the notation. <clears throat> now, let's say we wanted to find uh, a set of terms in a sequence. And we say, well, let's just maybe find the first five terms. Well, what we're given here is we're given a rule or a formula in order for us to find those terms. So here we have uh, a sub 1, okay, that means n equals 1, that's the first term. So what we're going to do is wherever we see n, we're going to put 1 in place of n, and then we're going to multiply by 3 and subtract 4. So 3 times 1 is 3, minus 4 equals negative 1. a sub 2, we're going to put 2 in for n, that's going to be 3 sub 2 minus 4, that's 6 minus 4, which equals 2 a sub 3, again, we're just putting 3 in for n, that's going to be 9 minus 4, which is equal to 5. <clears throat> a sub 4, we're putting 4 in for n, 3 times 4 is 12 minus uh, 4 is how much? That's 8, and then if we do a sub 5, 3 times 5 minus 4 is 15 minus 4, which equals 11. So now what I want to show you is, say we go ahead and plot these points. So what this represents is the first term is negative 1, so over here at 1, we're down here at negative 1. The second term is 2, so I'm going to go 2 and up 2. And the third term is 5, so that's going to be 3, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can see it's continuing at that same constant rate. And what you can notice here is that this really looks like the equation of a line. It looks like y equals mx plus b. m is like our slope. You can see 3, and you can see each of these is going up by 3 each time. So when you're adding the same quantity each time, we call that an arithmetic sequence. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit in another video uh, that I'll direct you to at the end of this video. But that's the key. This is graphing a sequence. And we don't want to draw a line through these points. This is actually like a discrete, meaning these are separate. There's not like a uh, point one, uh, like a one and a half term or 1.75 term. It's just uh, integer values like term one, two, three, four, etc. Okay, let's look at another example. So this one here, we've got a sub n equals two to the nth power plus one. How do we find the first five terms in this sequence? Well, we're going to follow that same pattern we did in the last problem. We take a sub one. Remember, n equals one. That just tells us that this is the value of the first term. But wherever we see n, we're going to put 1. So that's going to be 2 to the first power plus 1. Of course, 2 to the first is 2 plus 1 equals 3. For the second term, we're going to now put 2 in for n. So 2 squared is 4 plus 1 equals 5. Uh, the third term, we have 2 cubed plus 1. That's 8 plus 1, which equals 9. The fourth term, we have 2 to the fourth plus 1. That's 16 plus 1 is 17. And then for the fifth term, 2 to the fifth plus 1 is equal to 33. So let's go ahead and plot these points. I want to show you the pattern here. The first term is 3, so that's going to be right about here. The second term is 5, so that's going to be right about here. The third term is 9, okay, which is right about here. And the fourth term is 17, which is somewhere around here. I'm counting by 5s on the y-axis. The fifth term is at 33, which is somewhere right around here. Now what you'll notice on this one See how that variable is in the exponent position? This is an exponential function. So you can see it's growing faster and faster like that. And so this one is not uh, arithmetic. It's not geometric. Geometric is when you're multiplying by the same 
number each time to get to the next term in the sequence. But you can see it's not like we're adding the same thing each time. That would be arithmetic. We're not multiplying by the same number each time. That would be geometric. So this falls into what we call like a neither category. And in the follow-up uh, video to this lesson, I'm going to get into the details of how to work with those different formulas. But first, we want to set the groundwork here in this lesson. Okay, switching gears to talking about series now. A series is a sum, right? So you're adding all these terms together, and that represents the sum of the series. But when we talk about uh, writing a series in summation or sigma notation, what does that mean? Well, sigma, this is the Greek letter sigma right here, and it just means like sum, like you're adding up all the terms together. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the sum of this series here, and I want to show you a little bit about the notation. So we already talked about how this is the sum. This is the index here. See how i equals 1? And what you do is you put 1 in for i, and you find that value of that term. And then you work your way up sequentially, like uh, consecutively, until you get to this top number here. So we're going to put 1 in, then 2 in, then 3 in, then 4 in, all the way up to 5, and we're going to add up all those terms. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I put 1 in here, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is equal to 5. If I put the next number, okay, which is 2, that's going to be 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. If I put 3 in there, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9. If I put 4 in there, that's uh, 2 times 4 is uh, 8, plus 3 is 11. And if I put this top number in here, 5, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3 is 13. And again, remember the sigma means sum, so we're actually adding up all these terms together. So let's see, 5 plus 7 is 12. Uh, 12 plus 13 is 25, 9 plus 11 is 20, so 20 plus 25, that's 45. So that represents the sum of this series. So this is just a way of like writing the series in a more compact form. Instead of having to write out all of these terms, you can write it in the summation notation. Now let's look at another example. Let's look at number four here. What we're going to do is we're going to write this uh, series here at the top in summation notation. So how do we do that? So we're kind of working backwards to get to this form right here. So we're going to start off with our sigma, and we're going to use our index. We're usually we use the letter I or J or K. That's a typical. You can use any letter you want. You just want to make sure that these uh, match, okay? That this is I, this is I. And now what we need to do is we need to figure out how many terms are there. One, two, three, four, five terms. So this is going to be going from one to five. But now say, for example, this was like dot, 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 like that. So that means it keeps going forever and ever. And what we can do is then we can use this infinity symbol. So we're going from the first term to infinity. And this means that we're uh, summing or adding up all the terms. But we need a formula or a rule for this pattern here. We haven't talked about the formulas yet. So what we're going to do is let's just see if we can uh, figure out the pattern. It looks like we're subtracting 3 to get to the next term, next term, next term. So and you can see because it's a constant decrease. I'm thinking linear. I'm thinking like a line. And I'm thinking of a slope of negative 3, okay? But if I put 1 in here, I get negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. But see how I'm actually getting 9? So I need to adjust for that. I'm going to add 12. Uh, let's check that out. So negative 3 plus 12, that's 9. If I put 2 in here for the second term, that's negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 12 is 6. If I put 3 in here, that's negative 9 plus 12 is 3. Okay, it looks like it's working out. So it's basically... At this point, we're kind of having to be a little bit creative, but we're going to get into the formulas in that next video that I mentioned that follows up uh, for this video. So if you want, you can put it in parentheses to treat that like a group, but this is, again, just a compact way of writing this series. So follow me over to that video right there where we really dive into a lot of example problems, the formulas, uh, finding sums, finding a particular terms, etc. I'll see you over in that video.